So GPT-5 is finally here and well, it basically changes nothing. In fact, some people say it's even a step back in some areas. If like me, you watched the OpenAI live stream the other day and you managed to get past all the vocal fry from all the presenters, then you probably thought, when is the interesting stuff coming? When are they gonna show us the good stuff? And it just never came. So let's cut through the noise, let's cut through the BS and actually look at what GPT-5 does that's new, where it's good, where it's bad and how it changes or doesn't change the AI landscape. Okay, so what's actually new? Well, we got three new models. We got GPT-5, we got GPT-5 Mini, and GPT-5 Nano. GPT-5 is the most powerful, but the slowest and the most expensive, but not actually slow. It's actually much quicker than uh, the other GPT-4.0 uh, like models, the other flagship models. The Mini is the kind of middle child, which is best of neither world. And then the Nano is the, the cheapest, the most lightweight, the quickest one, but it doesn't have all of the power of GPT-5 flagship model. So pretty standard stuff here. We've got three different models. When it comes to costs, it's not that expensive, but it's not that cheap. It's pretty comparable to Anthropic's models, which are comparable. Um, and it's almost identical to Gemini's 2.5 Pro. So it's pretty much in line with the other comparable models out there in terms of price. Now, one quite cool thing that it does is that the GPT-5 model will automatically switch between reasoning or just a basic model without reasoning, which means we no longer have to think about, oh, do I want to use GPT-4.0 or do I want to use 04 for this? I mean, who thought of that naming convention, right? But you no longer have to think about, do I want to use a reasoning model or do I not want to use a reasoning model? GPT-5 does this itself and chooses between, for this query, whatever you ask it, does it need to use a reasoning model or not. Now, in practice, this all sounds good. And if it's mastered and if it's done well, then this is gonna be great. And it's, I think, gonna change the way that reasoning models work. They just won't be a thing anymore. It will just be a model which uses reasoning when reasoning is useful. However, we might see that if you take away the option to use a specific reasoning model, sometimes it's not gonna use reasoning when it should use reasoning. So we're just gonna have to see um, how well this actually works. Okay, so let's talk about the dreaded topic, benchmarks. I think it's safe to say that by now, everyone is sick of benchmarks. We all know that they just pick the benchmarks which make them look good. And there's a hundred different benchmarks out there. So depending on which benchmark you go to, they're all gonna say different things. But OpenAI decided to do something a little bit spicy this time. They decided to gaslight us with the graphs that they showed us and the figures and the numbers that they showed us. Like, have a look here. What is going on here? This is not how numbers work. This is not how graphs work. Will most people notice? No, I will though, OpenAI, I will notice. But looking past this, the graphs that were correct just showed a tiny improvement. You'll see that we've gone from 98.4% on a competition maths test with uh, 03 to 100% with GPT-5 Pro. And you'll see here that we've got 5 Pro. There's also GPT-5 thinking. So even though they said, hey, we've only got three models and making it super easy, there are other models kind of hidden there. So have they made it much simpler with uh, their new convention of naming these models and not having the thinking and the reasoning and all that? Mm, not really. But back to this example, does this increase of what's that, you know, 1.6%, does it really make a massive difference? No, I don't think so. And this is essentially the story of GPT-5 and most new models now it's only an incremental improvement. People are expecting AGI and it's just not coming. It's just slightly better at doing maths. So it looks like GPT-5 doesn't really change the way in which AI affects people and businesses. But if you do want to know how you can apply AI within a business to make the business more profitable or to increase the growth of a company, then do check out my mastermind down in the description. I've also got a free community. I'll leave all sorts of stuff in the description. Go check it out if you're interested in either um, growing your business with AI or upon selling services to businesses to help them grow their business with AI. They've also made a few changes to the API, such as now we can define how much effort we want GPT to put into a certain query, so that now you can get it to do a little bit of reasoning rather than a lot of reasoning, if you just want a little bit of thought in there. So you can speed up times to completion um, when you're passing in large amounts of information, which is kind of useful. They've added in something called verbosity, which is, you know, making the answer more verbose. If you don't just want a, uh, a short answer, but a long rambling answer, then you can do this. You could have done exactly the same thing just by changing the context that you're passing into the prompt or the system prompt that you're passing into the model. 
this doesn't really change anything. They say they've increased the context window of GPT-5 to 400,000 tokens, which is like, what, 300,000 words. Their website does only say 256,000, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But models like Gemini have a context window of like a million tokens. So this improvement doesn't really mean anything. There are also some reports that GPT-5 is a step back in some departments, particularly in the image generation space. Mr. Who's the Boss did a video showing the difference in YouTube thumbnails that it will produce, and you can see quite clearly it is a step back. However, OpenAI's image generation models have not really been uh, at the, the cutting edge for a while now, so I don't think this is going to make a massive difference because if you are creating images, you'll probably just go somewhere else anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so I have bashed on GPT-5 for a while now. Let me talk about some of the good points. And there are two really, really good points, I think. Now, the first point, and something that I think is a genuine step forward, is that GPT-5 appears to be very, very good at software development, at coding. And actually, what's more than coding is software development. Not just being able to write the code, but being able to develop a piece of software which you can actually deploy rather than just looks good on demos. Like it makes sense, all of the code makes sense in an entire system. And you don't have to, you know, throw in prompts there like, be extra super sure that it can't be hacked. It's more of a, you know, a mid-level dev rather than a junior dev. Now, I haven't actually got the chance to try this for myself. However, I have seen other people try it and the difference of using GPT-5 compared to 4.0 Mini or even Claude 4, 4.1 is noticeable. It does look very good and not only good at technically coding, but the, the looks, the graphics of the bits of software that it produces do seem to be a real step forward as well. The live stream was also really interesting as a lot of the time was spent, like maybe 80% of the time was spent focusing upon the coding abilities of GPT-5. And I think this is a route that OpenAI may be going down, is that they are seeing that one of the main uses, one of the main value adds that AI is having right now is in coding. It's just completely changing the game. Not that I think that GPT-5 is changing the game. I think it's an improvement, but not a game changer, but uh, AI, as, as a thing, as an entire thing, across all the different providers and models, really is changing software development. So if you are a vibe coder or developer, then it looks like GPT-5 may well be a big step forward. And the other big step forward is not actually the model itself, but with ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is the website that you go to to use OpenAI models in their nice user interface. The model is what's working behind the scenes. And I think OpenAI are fantastic with their ChatGPT product and experience. And what they showed and demoed was connecting to tools is now easier than ever. They showed a great demo of where they connected um, a person's emails and Google Calendar, that's Gmail emails and Google Calendar, to uh, ChatGPT and then asked ChatGPT to plan out their day tomorrow and it gave actually some really useful information. Now, does this change the game? Sort of. If you are not that technical, then yes, I think this is a game changer or certainly an improvement in how AI can actually help you in your day-to-day -day life. If you know what you're doing and you already are creating little bits of, you know, uh, automations or agents, then this is not groundbreaking at all. We've been able to do this exact thing for months, six months, maybe a year within tools like NATM, being able to build agents which connect to your, uh, your emails and to your calendar. It's nothing new, but it is bringing it to the masses and making it easier for the masses to use. So I do think that OpenAI are doing a really great job with ChatGPT, which I think is the, the way in which most people are using AI in their lives. It's also very cool that uh, when I'm using ChatGPT, I just have one model to select, just five. I don't have to pick between them. This seems good at the moment. I've yet to try it out fully and really test it, but it does seem good. One big, 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 big thing for me though is in a recent interview, Sam Altman did say that if the courts come to them, if the US government comes to them and asks for your uh, chat logs with ChatGPT, they'll give it to them, right? They'll give up your information. So even though you're probably not doing anything wrong, do you really want to connect up your emails and your calendar and give all of your personal information to OpenAI, who can then give it to the government or give it to whoever they want to? Maybe. It's one of those things you have to answer for yourself about privacy. So overall, ChatGPT 5 looks like an improvement. But the thing is, everyone's kind of been expecting AGI, whatever the hell that means, for the last couple of months now. And this is certainly not it. It looks like it has some improvements, especially in coding. It looks like ChatGPT is getting better. Uh, it's got a few other areas which are interesting, but it's basically just a load of hype, which doesn't really change anything, especially if you're building things with AI, such as agents. There is nothing new that you couldn't previously do just with a good prompt or connecting it to tools. So ChatGPT 5 changes 
basically nothing. However, I'm sure they'll say that GPT-6 is the real game changer, and I cannot wait for that one. If you have liked this video, then uh, do drop a like down below. If you wanna see more videos like this, please do subscribe. That is it, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.